Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix, and this is the 2024 Ford Mustang Dark Horse. So it's not a GT. It's not a Shelby, because there isn't one any longer. This is the new performance car, and yes, it has 500 horsepower, because I know that's the first question you want to know is how much and how fast. We don't have prices yet, but when we get them, we'll put them down below, but we have a lot to show you some major changes on this car. So first off, looking at the Dark Horse, this cool paint. If you remember the old Mystic or Flip Flop paint, this is another type of paint. It's like a denim blue. It's got tons of metallic in it. And when you look at it at different angles, it pulls up different greens and yellows. It's really cool paint. But let's take a look at this vehicle overall. You got a functional hood. That's really important. You want to escape that heat from that five liter Coyote motor. Coming down here, this is the regular Mustang logo, the one you've seen before but there is a Dark Horse logo. We'll show you that in just a second. It's all black. It's about being evil and aggressive. In the front, you've got two new air vents. These vents are for bringing air into. Air induction, we need a lot of air. That means you can use more fuel. That air to fuel mixture means you're gonna get more power out of this thing. Remember, you're buying horsepower, but you're driving torque. We'll talk about that in the under the hood segment, so you wanna stay with us. Underneath here, you've got a new balance. And we've got this air dam. I will tell you, it is low. And I kind of wish that Ford had like a rise like they do on the Porsche, where you can lift that front end so you don't clip anything. You can see it's already dirty, very easy to scuff. It is made of a polycarbonate. It is not carbon fiber, thank goodness. But it's good to know that if you buy this car, just be aware of all the ground clearances. You'll also notice some new uprights here that are black, very aggressive, very mean looking, which is what I love about this car. I want to show you some more. Just check this out. First off, Dark Horse written right here on the hood. It is a decal. I wish it was painted, but that's what they're all doing now. So that's kind of cool. So to let everyone know, and this is the new logo. This is the Dark Horse logo. And it's the first time ever you're seeing the face of the horse. It looks pretty evil, doesn't it? Pretty aggressive. Pirelli Trofeo tires, really sticky. They last longer than the last tires. I own a GT500 and a 350R, and I will tell you, you go through tires quickly when you put it on the track. You can get the carbon wheels or the alloy wheels and big, big Brembo brakes because if you've got go power, you need woe power. Six piston, disc brakes in the front, four in the rear, aluminum hats. This is really like almost a race car setup. And if you're going to put this thing on the track, maybe for a NASA event, an autocross, a solo one, something, have fun on the track, this is the car you're going to want. This is the car everyone's going to want because there's no competition. There's no Charger. There's no Challenger. There's no Camaro. They're gone for 24. This will be the only player in town. So let's take a look at some more details on this car. It pretty much looks like the Mustang GT when you're looking at it in the side. It only comes with a hard top, but it does come with two different transmissions. Again, we'll cover that in just a second. Small mirrors, which is nice, less drag, because when you have big things that are in the way, it causes the vehicle to be slower. You got not just your horsepower to weight ratio, but you also need to get this thing slippery as possible. So they've redesigned the mirrors just a touch. Coming across the back here, all black roof. You can see the bigger hips in back, bigger tires in back as well for these Pirellis. These are really sticky tires. We do get a chance to play with it on the road course as well as on the street. And you can tell these things just like to grip. So well done for Pirelli. Coming around to the back, you've got a different wing, a little bit different. I prefer the bigger wing like on a GT500. That's okay, you can't have it all. I'm waiting for more power. Hopefully Ford is listening. Uprights here, that Dark Horse logo again backup camera, the new Chevron taillights, which are here. That's also really nicely designed. Again, those are a love-hate. A lot of people like them, some people don't. You can put that in the comments below. This, I love. This is the exhaust system. Huge sewer pipes, two on each side. Take a listen to the exhaust. Under the hood, we've got a 5-liter Coyote V8 naturally aspirated with dual intake air boxes, dual throttle body design, 500 horsepower, 418 pound-feet of torque with the active exhaust. So what's underneath this motor in the block is forged connecting rods and bearings from the GT500, so you're going to have a really strong motor. It's backed by a Tremec TR3160 transmission that includes standard rev matching, or if you want and you want to go for the lame, in my opinion, 
10 speed, it's the 10 R8 automatic transmission. It's a good transmission. Final drive ratios for the automatic is 355 to one. That's the Torsen limited slip diff. If you want the manual, you're gonna get 373s, which gives you better launch. Doesn't help in the fuel economy, but who really cares? Limited slip diff as well. There's a rear diff cooler and a transmission cooler. This vehicle rides on Magna Ride dampeners that are standard. Wheels in the front are 19 by 10s. When it comes to the tires, they're 275 40s in the front and 315s in the rear. There are different drive modes. We'll show you that in the drive par portion of it, as well as the track apps when we take this sucker on the track. It's going to be very fun. If you want to know more about the GT and some of the crossover components, you can watch that on our GT video as well as our EcoBoost video. We show you about the new remote rev feature as well as the electric drift brake so you can be like Vaughn Gittin Jr. The art of drifting. Under the hood of the Mustang Dark Horse is Mustang Dark Horse in your five liter logo. But what this is, is supporting those shock towers under acceleration. You've also got an export brace styling. You don't want the shock towers and everything to be compressed and moved. So in order to keep the best traction, you wanna make sure you've got this cross brace and this export brace, which is what they've done in the, all the Mustangs. Again, this is all this light weighting and making this vehicle stick to the road, especially for road courses. This vehicle has it and you can drag race this car too. I know you wanna see inside this car because no matter what it looks like on the outside, you live on the inside. It has to be as cool as the outside and it is. Starting when you open the door, Mustang Dark Horse right here on the sill plate to let you know that you are driving a very cool vehicle. Other little Easter eggs, you're gonna see this Mustang logo right here on the side. And there's also puddle lamps that are the Mustang logo. Love these blue Recaro seats, they're leather. Really nice, and if you're worried about getting in the back seat, which is pretty good for like a dog, your laptop case, it's really tight back there, but if you really need to get back there, you can. Let's take a look at these Recaro seats. These Recaro seats, as far as I'm concerned, are the best in the business. They're super supportive. You've got side bolsters. You've got all the support for your thighs. Very comfortable seating, and if you're on a track, it's Recaro seats all day long. You'll note that there is also openings at the top. If you're gonna put the car on the track and you wanna have harnesses, you gotta have the openings that are in the headrest area. That's the only way you're gonna get those belts from slide, not sliding off a regular seat. And that is a requirement if you wanna go on a track and get some good times. So what's in the trunk of this dark horse is a 10.3 cubic foot storage area. Fold down those two seats. They're like a 50-50 split in back and you're at 13.3 cubic feet of storage. You got your subwoofer back here and there is no spare tire, but there's plenty of room to get your luggage and your gear in back. High lift over, but it does drop down here, which makes it a little bit easier to put those big bags in. Sure, it'll fit a couple sets of clubs. There's a lot of really cool features inside this car. The first thing you're gonna notice, blue. Blue is everywhere. Blue stitching on the steering wheel. Even this shifter knob is 3D, it's made of titanium. It also has a blue hue to it, really cool. Uh, this is not carbon fiber, it's carbon fiber look. But you do get the Dark Horse logo here on the front in front of the passenger. And this is the number of the car. In this case, we have number 30. Personally, I'm number 27, so that means that my car is floating around here somewhere. I do not have one of these vehicles, but we'll talk about that at the end. Let's start this car up. I want you to see and hear some of the things. Flat bottom steering wheel, in my opinion, required for a performance car. So we have three pedals here. Start button is right there. Nice. We'll put it in neutral. You've got an all new screen all the way across the front of this. This is currently in sport mode. If I put it into race mode, it's so loud you may not be able to hear me. But all of your SYNC 4 system is here. All your controls are right here and easy to use. We currently have the audio system off, but this is a new audio system from Bang & Olufsen. Really like this setup, super easy, quick and everything you need. The only thing I'm not the biggest fan of is the climate control. As we were driving, it got a little bit hot, and I thought, oh, I'll just change the temperature. Your natural reaction is to look for a button. Well, unfortunately, you have to use this, so when you want to change the temperature, it's either a slide or press that up or down. It's just a distraction. If you're driving, you're focused on driving, and sometimes that's part of it. Um, other than that, I'm loving everything about this. Seats are super comfortable. Steering wheel is nice and grippy. Big, meaty steering wheel, great spot for resting your thumbs. So you have all your charge ports here and a spot for your radar detector, but this button is cool. You press this button 
and suddenly you get all your track apps. So it actually has tracks that are installed in it. You can get your auxiliary gauges. There's three gauges or a five gauge option. You can set that up how you want. All kinds of settings there. If you said, no, I, that's not what I'm looking for. I want something else. You can go back, you can customize your modes, your my colors for ambient lighting. This is one of my favorite things. I don't know why, but I think it's just the coolest thing. You can match your drive mode. You can have the normal, which looks like that. Your sport, then it goes to, a, to on the sides. Your track, which becomes a linear gauge, which is what we use in race cars like the MoTeC. The calm mode, that's not me, so that wouldn't apply. But I used to have a couple of these over the years, 87 to 93 Fox Body chassis, and it changes these gauges to look like the gauges from the old Fox Body, and at night they turn green, which blows me away because I think it's one of the coolest things. I've had Mustangs since you know the 70s. I've owned tons of them. 79 Mustang was my first car, but all that just so cool. But we'll go back to the track mode for now. So as you change your drive modes, which are right here, it changes those gauges. So you can see that there's a nice animation sport. You got track, you got the drag, which is awesome. You got to take this thing to the drags. It, it transfers weight from the front to the rear really nicely, which is what's important to get good short times. I used to be a drag racer. Slippery, it's raining, and I've driven a lot of these performance cars in the rain. You definitely need the slippery mode. Custom, make it how you like it. The normal mode, if you're taking someone who's not really a car enthusiast for a ride, then you would do that. Uh, all, everything's pretty normal. It's normal Ford. You've got your, your cruise control here, your audio systems, your phone here. You can adjust things like your steering setups here, right? Sport, that's how I prefer it. But all of this is super easy to use. This car is a blast, and we're going to take it for a ride, not just on the street, but on the track. Let's go for a ride. So we're inside the dark horse, and we're doing a street drive before we put it on the track, so you want to stay with us for that. So the first thing you're going to note is the experience is similar to that of a GT350 or a Mach 1. This has 500 horsepower, 416 pound-feet of torque. It does have the rev matching Tremec with the 3160 transmission. So that means you can lift and shift. If you don't know how to do that, it's something you need to practice. It means you don't jam it into gear like you would a sequential box or you know straight cut gears on a race car, but you can lift shift it's notch notch so it's something that you can do and if you want to shift instead of having the automatic if you're as part of my expression lame enough to have to use the automatic forget the 10 speed automatic transmission yeah they sell it if you want a sports car you want to have a manual transmission three pedals no one's stealing the car because they don't teach kids how to drive manual transmissions so we got different drive modes right now we're in the normal mode we're going to drop it into the sport mode everything changes the suspension hear the exhaust note which I like I like it better in race mode but then what it does is it shuts off all the nannies all those safety features listen to that in sport mode this thing sounds awesome sewer pipe exhaust pipes backup cameras okay visibility is not crystal clear like on some other things but it's all you need because you got a rear view mirror this just rides so nicely Pirelli tires these are very sticky tires they say at Ford these and Pirelli that these tires are going to last longer. Uh, I will tell you, there's not a lot of tread. This is not uh, an all-season tire. And if you're going to put it on the track, be prepared to pull out your wallet and get some new tires. Uh, in addition, seats, Recaro's, my favorite, best in the marketplace. They're not paying me. I will tell you, if you've never sat in a Recaro seat, you'll love the support. Here we go. That's in sport mode, and you can easy get, easily get yourself way beyond the speed limit. There's other drive modes as well, and you can also change the gauge faces. When you press the Mustang button, you can get all these gauge faces, much like the GT, much like the EcoBoost. So you can change the steering wheel to the drive modes. You've got a track mode, changes everything. There's a drag strip mode as well, and there's also a slippery mode. So if it's raining, I highly recommend you use the slippery mode. It, it cuts off all the performance side of it. But I'm gonna put it into the track mode, not the drag strip, but the track mode. You're gonna hear the exhaust note change. Oh, baby. And all the gauges change. It becomes a linear gauge, much like that of a Ford GT.
just got outside of the dark horse on the track here at Charlotte vehicle is really good handles better than the previous gen vehicle better than the 350 uh, one of the things that I think it's better than is the Mach 1 so if you're thinking you got a Mach 1 this is a better car looking for something with more power had a good time at the track it handled well and certainly it's a lot of fun we had a blast with this Dark Horse Mustang on the street and on the track. This car truly performs. If you're thinking about getting a new Mustang, drive the GT, then drive the Dark Horse if you can get your hands on one. They're going to make as many of these as they can. But I'll have to say, until we get the pricing, my guess is going to be somewhere around where that Mach 1 was. So if you thought about owning a Mach 1, maybe you own a Mach 1. There's 11 different exterior colors. Today we've got this cool translucent flip floppy color. You might want to go with just red or black or silver. All those are available. This car is great from the factory. Huge fan. It's also running for North American Car of the Year. So you may see a lot more of this and I hope to get some more time in this vehicle. I'm sure you have more questions on the Dark Horse. Put that in the comments below and I'll get you some answers. We'll have pricing coming really soon, like I said. In addition, if you'd like to support our channel, you can buy me a cup of coffee. The link for that is in the description as well as for our website, our podcast, the book, and my social media. But right now, I'm taking this thing for a ride. Make sure to like and share. We'll talk to you next time.